Hello everyone for the Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz coming to you from Magnificent St. Joe University, the Michael J. Hagan Class of 1985 Arena. And we're coming to you here today from St. Joe's University. This is, of course, uh, the Voice of Reason, which is your source for high school and college basketball all across the tri-state area. And today we're going to have one of my dearest all-time friends in the entire, not just basketball universe, but the other side of the universe, Head coach Phil Martelli is going to come here to talk to us today about where he started his career and how he's transitioned here in the last 31 years here at St. Joseph's University. This is all coming up here today on The Voice of Reason. Hello everyone for Voice of Reason, this is Jake Schwartz for all your high school and college basketball needs all around the tri-state area as we're coming to you from St. Joseph University here at Beautiful City Line and it is my pleasure of course to welcome here for the first time here on Voice of Reason one of my dearest all-time friends, not just in the entire basketball universe but probably the other side of the universe. Phil Martelli, welcome to the Voice of Reason. It's always so good to see you. Very I mean kind of you to say that, I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, Coach, of course, uh, this is going to be just obviously I know your entire type of history. I know where you're, of course, where you came from. You're one of the many coaches in this universe who have never had to leave an entire city. You've stayed here in Philadelphia your entire life. Can, boy, can you rewind, of course, where it all started for you? Well, I would rewind to saying that it started at Narbeth Playground. It started in the... Uh and the playgrounds all throughout Delaware County where I had a chance to kind of grow and play this game. It grew for me from the Palestra. I played in a Catholic League championship game and a city title game representing St. Joseph's Prep. It grew for me at Widener, playing against a lot of Philadelphians and playing with a lot of Philadelphians. So having a chance to be in uh, Philadelphia for both high school and uh, college and then coaching in the Catholic League at Bishop Kenrick and and now 31 years at St. Joseph's. Um, I've cheated everybody, to be honest with you, because I've I been able to stay in one city the whole time. I think you've cheated. I don't think you've done any. I don't think you've done any type of cheating. And you know, by the way, you know the history I have over at the Narvath Basketball League. Five years, I've actually announced their championship game. So I think it's a thrill for myself to be able to announce in a league that has seen some of the greatest both Mainline and Philadelphia players grow in that league. And, of course, uh, my mentor and dear friend Jeremy Treatman, who coached in that league for at least 15 years. And he coached, I believe, two of your sons, who we'll get to in a moment. But you also were a high school coach for seven years at the defunct school, Archbishop Kendrick, where you coach with uh, somebody that I think a lot of us know, a Gino Ariema. What's that, what's that story uh, between the two of you? Well, I... Gino was a graduate of Kendrick. Uh, I asked him to come back and help. He coached the JV team. Uh, he was my assistant, and we were together. We were both, uh, we did not have children at that time, so we were together 360 days a year talking about basketball. We ran our, our program at Kenrick very much like a college program, and uh, I'm delighted by his, his success, uh, but I'm most appreciative of, of being able to call him a friend. And he's done quite well for himself as well, over 10 national titles and uh, at the University of Connecticut. He's been able to establish himself as a dominant force in college. Um, obviously, there's a lot of great rivalries he has between both Pat Summit of Tennessee and, of course, Muffet McGraw at Notre Dame. But ironically, you've had some great national power, of course, yourself. Um, I mean, again, 31 years, 10 as an assistant. You're in your 21st season here at St. Joe's. And, of course, uh, your two kids, of course, have had some basketball uh, success as well. Your son, Jimmy, of course, uh, who coached at Rutgers for a few seasons. And your son, Phil, who's now, of course, uh, uh, over at Delaware. But the best part about your son is his son, who, of course, <laughs> made that national type of uh, pa uh, success uh, two years ago, the year, of course, you won the Atlantic 10 Championship. Uh, you want to tell us about that? Well, one of the things that I try to do is I, I think it's important to put smiles on people's faces. And if I can start that at home with my grandson and, and obviously my wife, who is, uh, you know, part of the legendary uh, Mighty uh, Max Immaculata winning played national Played Kathy Rush, of course, yeah. So uh, my grandson, his love of the Hawks and his love of his grandfather is unconditional. And in today's world where uh, 
it's really conditional. The love that people have for you is conditional based on winning and yep. losing. And it's every day, winning and losing. Um, I'm just glad. I appreciate how the players have handled it. I appreciate how Marie Wozniak has been so helpful. And uh, we, we've done a lot to make sure that he knows that he's a kindergarten kid and that's it. He's oh, yeah. Not, well, that's he's not, yeah. not anything more than that. I, I think it's probably better, of course, to probably just keep it as a, as a, as a child rather than just be a national type of headline. Um, of course, uh, everybody, when you're walking on the streets, uh, everybody, of course, who comes up to you and says, yeah, we know this guy so well. He looks very familiar. Aren't you that coach who coached, of course, um, in that uh, undefeated season right here? Um, back in 2003, 2004, you had, of course, who then went on to be three NBA players. Uh, of course, uh, they were Dwayne Jones, Jameer Nelson, of course, Delonte West. Talk about, I guess, that was such a great season, of course. Well, it was a wonderful experience uh, because I had the best team in the country, uh, not just because I had the best players, but because they were the best teammates. They understood how to take each day and maximize that day. I will always respect them for that. And they set a standard for what it meant to be a team. And I think that standard has been emulated throughout this country, not just basketball teams, but I think any kind of organization, that was what your team should look like and it should feel like. And the only thing that I changed for people is that I didn't really coach that team, I managed that team. What and do you there's mean? a big difference. Managed? In coaching, you're, you're taking them through X's and O's. And in managing, you're making sure that everything is in order so sure. that for that particular moment in time, they can be the best that they can be in the weight room. They can be the best they can be if there's a day off. They can be the best they can be in the classroom. So um, my uh, opportunity, I will be forever grateful to that, to that entire team. Uh, certainly the three guys making the NBA was a, was a badge for us. But I have the same uh, respect for any of our guys that have gone through St. Joseph's, represented their families and our program in such a positive fashion. And that's, of course, uh, continuing with, of course, uh, Langston Galloway. And there's been talk going around about the, could be one of the top St. Joe players to go into the draft, possibly next year. That's DeAndre Beverly. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's talk about, of course, your role with the Coaches versus Cancer. You are the national chairman of the Coaches versus Cancer. You're also the uh, chairman here in Philadelphia Obviously, I've talked to a lot of people about this. I had a lovely chat with our buddy Carl Hoffman, who I know is on the board of the National Coast of Risk Cancer, and of course, Bill Campo, who has told me many different things about exactly what is your experience with Coaches versus Cancer? Well, I get a lot more than I give when I'm with Coaches versus Cancer. I have an opportunity uh, in some small way to get the Philadelphia corporate community to rally and for people to write checks and donate dollars and little kids to be involved in our school initiative program, just on the hopes that we can make one person's quality of life a little bit better. And everything so here goes me, to Coaches vs. Right, Cancer, every here, camp, every yeah. uh, event. So, for me, I wake up every day with three priorities. My family's number one, my team is number two, and crushing cancer, not beating cancer, not helping people with cancer. I want to crush cancer. If I can get those three things done every day, then I've had a good day. And so it's basically just, we don't want to make sure that it gets, we just want to make sure it's completely out of the picture. Like a hurricane, we want it to just basically drift off to sea, kind of. Okay. I haven't ever thought of cancer in a hurricane, but <laughs> I'll take you on your word. Well, of course, uh, this year should be a very good season. Of course, two years ago, winning the Atlantic 10 championship. And of course, you've got a lot of great players coming back, led, of course, by... Uh, eight top A-10 player, DeAndre Bembry. But of course, you've got some really big additions, of course, this year, and I'm going to read on the list, uh, Pierre Francesco Olivia. We have Shavar Newkirk, of course, who's back, and our two, of course, two rival players here in Philadelphia, uh, Lamar Kimmel and Chris Clover, uh, from both, I uh, uh, should say, Newman Goretti, and of course, uh, from St. Joe's Prep. Your thoughts on this season coming up? Well, I'm, I'm anxious to be with uh, all of these players, they're wonderful teammates, it's a really good team of guys. We have one great player. DeAndre Bembry is a great player. Everybody else is kind of trying to find their way and fit their niche. Uh, and really, to Fresh and Chris Clover, uh, they're not rivals anymore. They're Hawks. Oh, and we funny. need them to go <laughs> forward that way and to see it that way. And to be honest with you, they can't be Philadelphians. They have to look at this as they're now here at 54th and City Line Avenue. 
and we expect them to uh, do great things and leave a big time mark here in our program. Well, you open the season, of course, against Drexel this Friday night at 8 p.m. Uh, those of you can catch it, of course, uh, right here at the Michael Hagen Arena. And of course, as always, it's such a pleasure. You and I, again, as mentioned, we have known each other at least close to 10 years, uh, all the history, of course, that we have. And it's always such a thrill to see you. And Coach Phil Martelli, we thank you again for stopping by. This is Jake Schwartz for another presentation of The Voice of Reason. That's your source for high school and college basketball across the tri-state area. Hello, everyone, for The Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz here at the magnificent Hagen Arena here at St. Joseph's University. And, of course, this is your source for high school and college basketball across the entire tri-state area. As you, of course, can see before you, we're coming to you from magnificent St. Joe's, home, of course, of a team that just a few years back won the Atlantic 10 Championship. It's a team that has had great history over the last 25 to 30 years of college basketball. I want to thank, of course, our guest today, Phil Martelli. Hopefully, again, as mentioned, uh, on my personal end, I'll try to get some uh, quick shots with, of course, some of the players. But I want to thank, of course, my uh, videographer, my dear dearest friend and neighbor, coincidentally, Michael Young, who, of course, uh, is a classmate of mine over at Upper Dublin High School. It's been a great day again, as mentioned, and again, uh, it's going to be an even better thrill for the St. Joseph Hawks. They'll start their season. Why not against the City Six? Bruiser Flint and the Drexel Dragons will invade the Michael Hagen Arena as one of the many members is about to actually uh, run right down. That's, of course, former Philly Electrical Technology charter, Jai Williams. I'm only making a joke, of course, about that. But again, I'm being serious, of course, when I mentioned to you that St. Joe's certainly has great success here in the Philadelphia area as they are led, of course, by DeAndre Bemery from the former school known as the St. Patrick's, now the Patrick School in the New Jersey area. He's among the league leaders in the Atlantic 10 as St. Joe's will take on Drexel University right here at Michael Hagen Arena. I believe that is also a doubleheader that uh, day as the women's will open up their season at 6 and the men's will play at 8. So for all of us again here at the Voice of Reason, or I should say here at St. Joe's University at Michael Hagen Arena, I'm Jake Schwartz for Voice of Reason.